Hello again. In this video, we're going to look at part three in Sam Adams' post-tribulation rapture series on his website, independencebaptist.com. So let's take a look here. He says, the Apostle Paul taught a post-trib rapture in 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 1 to 8. And I have a video on, on uh, my channel. Um called Help with 2 Thessalonians 2. You can check that out where I go into in-depth about 2 Thessalonians 2. Um, so let's look at um, what he says here. He says, The plain sense interpretation and obvious point of this passage meant to dispel false alarm at Thessalonica is that the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him in verse 1 the day of Christ, and in verse 2, that day, in verse 3, uh, will not occur until after the falling away, apostasy, and the Antichrist is revealed and destroyed in verse 3. I don't think it says that he'll be destroyed in verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come, a, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. So it doesn't say that he's destroyed in verse 3. The word by in verse 1 means concerning or regarding. Okay. The falling away in verse 3 um, cannot mean the rapture, departure, okay, because one, the clear meaning of the Greek, okay, I don't care about the Greek, because the Apostle Paul would then be making a contradictory statement that are gathering together unto him will not happen until our gathering together nope. that our gathering together unto him will not happen until after our gathering together unto him okay um, I think what he's trying to do there is there's there are some people that teach that the falling away is the rapture and it's not it's in a, it, it's uh, apostasy um, so I think some people go to the Greek to prove that, um, they, they try to. I think they try to go to the Greek word and then show that that really means it was mistranslated. Which I don't even bother with those people because you, you can't correct the Bible. Um, he writes, "Pre-tribbers claim he who now letteth in verse seven is the Holy Spirit as working through the church. Therefore, the church must be removed from the earth before the Antichrist can be revealed." This theory is diametrically in error. Number one, the church would never be described as a he. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent God and will never be taken out of the way. That's number two. Excuse me. And number three, the theory completely ignores Paul's context and main point, which runs through the entire passage, that Christ's coming must be preceded by the apostasy and coming of Antichrist. Um, this is the point. Um, verses 1 to 3, again in 6 to 8. The word withholdeth and letteth in verse 6 and 7 is the same word in the Greek. I don't care about the Greek. It is the same person withholding in both places. The phrase and then in verse 8 means at that time. It is the coming of Antichrist that is withholding the revealing of Christ in his time. The mystery of iniquity in verse 7 is Satan himself. Uh, see 1 John 2.18, it is the Antichrist that will be taken out of the way at Christ's coming. Okay, so he really has a, uh, a take on this that I don't, I'm not sure I've ever seen before, from, even from a post-tribulation point of view. Um, so let's take a look. Let me see if there's any comments I want to make here. Um start uh, he letteth yeah okay um i'm gonna what i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna go through his point here and but what i'm gonna do is i'm going to put uh, a link to my video on second thessalonians 2 um, down in the description of this video and you can check that out and get you know what i believe about the passage and I go through that, and I'm going to go through that a little bit here in this um, commentary on this point. 
of his. But I think he's, you know, there's a couple things he's way out there on. Um, his assignment of pronouns in the passage, um, he, I don't think he understands the passage very well. So he kind of goes off the rails in his assignment of pronouns in this passage to make it work for him, but it causes the passage to sound like uh, complete nonsense. Um, Adams makes the withholder, you know, he who letteth, you know, will let, and uh, he who, verse seven, he, let's see, verse six, you know, what withholdeth, and he who letteth will let. He makes the, you know, I'll call it the withholder out to be the Antichrist who's withholding Jesus Christ from being revealed. I've never heard that before ever. And if you compare the three mentions of who's being revealed, the other two are clearly the Antichrist. And so the third one, where he uses the pronoun, is going to be the Antichrist also. Otherwise, there's no, there's really no antecedent for that pronoun if you try to make it Jesus Christ. Um, so let's see, verse 3 says plainly that it is talking about, about the man of sin, the son of perdition, being revealed. Verse 6 says that there is a what withholding, so that he, which the antecedent for this pronoun is that man of sin, isn't revealed. So there's a what withholding so that he isn't revealed. So let, verse 6, and now you know what, so there's what that withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. So who, did, who was talked about being revealed previous to that? It was the man of sin. Uh, except there come a, verse 3, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now verse 6, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Well, who is he talking about being revealed? The Antichrist. <clears throat> um, okay, so Adams tries to make the he ought to be Jesus Christ and the withholder to be the Antichrist, which doesn't line up with what was said previously, and it makes verses 7 and 8 sound foolish. Uh, because it makes the Antichrist to be the he that is keeping that wicked from being revealed. If you read, if you if the withholder is now the he, now watch, uh, verse six. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So he's saying that that what is withholding, so that the he he's making that to be Jesus Christ is revealed. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. So he's calling that. He's saying that that's the antichrist. And then, so after the antichrist is taken out of the way. Then shall that wicked be revealed. But he didn't say that. He's saying that the wicked, that the Antichrist is taken out of the way so that Jesus Christ is revealed. But that's not what the scripture says at all. Um, after something is taken out of the way in verse 7, then that wicked is revealed. The three references to someone being revealed in verses 3, 6, and 8 are the same. The what that withholdeth and the he who letteth is the Holy Ghost. Here is how the passage is to be correctly understood. Uh, the day of Christ is a reference to the judgment seat of Christ. For a more in-depth study on his teaching, um, look at the video that, I, that I'm going to put in the description on 2 Thessalonians 2. The he who leadeth is a reference to the Holy Ghost indwelling Christians. Most people, pre- and post-trib, do not understand this because they view the Holy Ghost as Adams did here in his blog, as an omnipresent person that cannot be taken out of the way. However, we must remember that in John 7, 39, you can go look that up in your own time, the Bible told us that the Holy Ghost was not yet given. So if the Holy Ghost had, had to be given, then it likewise can be taken. And when he is taken, those he indwells will go with him. The what? That withholdeth is a reference to the Holy Ghost. See Acts chapter 19 verse 3, where Paul indirectly calls the Holy Ghost a what? Um, he says there, um, have you, he says to those men um, there, I think they're, they're Jewish. He says to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you have believed? 
And they said, we have not so much as heard as the Holy Ghost. And he says to them then, then unto what have you been baptized? So he indirectly calls the Holy Ghost as what? If you haven't been baptized into the Holy Ghost, unto what have you been baptized? So he indirectly calls the Holy Ghost a what? Like Peter indirectly indirectly calls Paul's epistles scripture in 2 Peter 3.15. Meaning he doesn't directly call Paul's uh, epistles scripture, but he calls them indirectly scriptures by referring to the other scriptures that people rest. You can check that out on your own as well. So verse 3 is only saying that there is to be a falling away first before the day of Christ. Uh, the point after the comma is to be divided like Jesus divided Isaiah 61 2 in Luke chapter 4. So it's not, it's, it's the passage, how most people read the passage is they think, okay, first there's a falling away, and second, then the Antichrist is revealed. That's not how, what, it, what it's saying. What it's saying is there must be falling away first. That's it. So after the falling away, the day of Christ will happen. He says, and that man of sin be revealed. It's just, it's not how we speak um, today, but it's not saying that there's falling away first, and then the man of sin be revealed, and then the rapture. He's saying that um, that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That's it. Then you divide, then you div after the comma, he's saying there's a falling away first. So at that point, it hadn't happened yet. So there's a falling away first, the rapture will happen, and then, and that man of sin be revealed. That is how you are supposed to um, divide that scripture there. So um, that's pretty much it. It's kind of a bizarre take on um, who the different pronouns are, are referring to in that chapter. It, it really, um, you know, I... I it's, this is a popular post-tribulation rapture passage, primarily because of verse 3, and that's pretty much why people try to make that falling away. They try to run to the Greek and make that falling away um, mean the rapture, which it doesn't. Um, but he's got a, I mean, it's a really strange take on on that. It, it makes the, the verses, uh, I've seen, um, you know, some, a lot better, you know, I guess I should say more deceptive post-trib teachings on this particular chapter than this. This was a really kind of poor understanding of that chapter. So that's it. It's pretty short, not, not a whole lot there. So that's number th part three, and uh, we'll see you in part four. Have a good night, everyone.